I'm going to teach you how to dissect a challenging book. And this is going to do two things for you. First, it's going to help you decide if you even want to read the book in the first place. And the second thing it's going to do is it's going to make it so it's not an overwhelming experience. We've all been there. You know, you get into a book and then it hits you like a brick wall and you're like, what have I gotten myself into? So even if it is going to be challenging, you're at least prepared for it. Now, everything that we're about to talk about actually comes from this book here called How to Read a Book. Fantastic name. So this is a classic book in this how to read space. And this was written by Mortimer Adler in the 1940s and then essentially rewritten in the 1970s. But he was the first to coin the term inspectional reading. And that's exactly what I'm going to teach you right now. So this book I have in front of you is one of my all time favorites. It's Evolution of the Human Head by Daniel Lieberman. And this is a challenging book. This is essentially a textbook. This is something you would see in graduate programs. And it's not for the faint of heart. So if I were to approach this book for the very first time, I want to decide if I even want to read it. And the way I'm going to do that is by skimming the book. We all understand that skimming means kind of like perusing, but there's actually a way to do that. So the first thing you're going to do, this, is, this really shouldn't surprise anybody, is you're going to read the covers. So you're going to look at the cover, you're going to, you know, the front cover, the back cover, whatever's on it, you're going to read it. Now, in the case if it's a hard cover, you're also going to read the jacket and you're going to just go through both the front and the back. The next thing you're going to do is something that essentially no one does. And this is really surprising. You're actually going to read the table of contents. Like most people, they look at the table of contents and they say, oh, that's there for reference. I'll look at that if I need it. You really shouldn't do that. When you see the table of contents, you're looking at the author just telling you, hey, this is what the book is about. So you actually should read every single aspect of the table of contents. This is giving you an idea of what the book is going to be about because just by the name, okay, I know it's about the evolution of the human head, but this is breaking it down into things that are gonna be digestible for you. The next thing you're gonna do is go all the way to the back. And this is where you're going to find a glossary, an index, um, an appendix. This is where you're getting to see the terms, the references used to make the book. Are you going to read this? Like, you're not going to scan through this and read every single aspect of it. Instead, what you're doing is just familiarizing yourself with this. You're going to see how much work the author put into this. And you're also going to start to understand, is there certain terms that I'm going to need to know? Because, you'll again, you'll often see a glossary depending on the type of book. From here, you're now going to read the preface. Now, the preface is the first part of the book before chapter one. And this is, again, something that people skip over all the time. It's kind of like, oh, this is, this is something I just don't need to know. You should, because this will give you an idea as to what the author or why the author wrote the book in the first place. You want to read the preface. And then from there, you're going to do my favorite part of it. You're going to start skimming through the book and you're going to start just reading random pieces. You know, I mean, it depends on how you want to do this. You could spend an hour doing this and you could read the beginning of every single chapter. So not only you find the beginning of the chapter, you read like the first page or at least maybe the first paragraph. What I like to do is just scan through and just read chunks. So I'll find a paragraph here. I might read a couple lines. Maybe I might even read a whole page. It kind of just depends on how I'm feeling, but I will scan through the entire book. But a book like this where there's going to be graphs, there's going to be images, I will look at those. And the whole purpose of this is to familiarize myself with the book. Like, what am I getting myself into if I decide to actually read this? And I'm going to scan through it. And oftentimes, you're going to start learning things automatically. You're like, oh, cool. You're exposed to this new piece of information. And as you get to the end of the book, this is where you get to my absolute favorite part. So let's see if I can find it here. You're going to spoil the book for yourself, essentially. It's not really a spoil for a nonfiction book. You're going to read the end. You're going to read the you're going to read the end of the book. And you do this because most authors for a nonfiction type book, this is where they summarize their whole point. Like why did they write this book? What what is the message the author is trying to get across to you to the reader? They're going to put it right here. So you may have to read the last paragraph. Well, you're definitely going to read the last paragraph, but you might read the last page, maybe even a couple pages, it kind of depends, but you are going to get an idea of what the whole point of this book is. And when you put this together with the preface, with the table of contents, with the appendix, the glossary, what you've done 
is you've skimmed the book. This is the first step in what's called inspectional reading. And all you've really done is get an idea of what this book is about so you can decide if you wanna read it. Now, typically, there's three options that you really have from here. First, I don't wanna read it. And you throw the book away, right? This is just not the book for me. Maybe it's too challenging. Maybe I'm just not interested. There's countless reasons that you may not wanna read it, but you've decided not to read it. Second thing, is that it's kind of like in the same vein, you're not gonna read it, but that's because you don't really feel the need to read it. You may already know the information or know enough of the information or it's not challenging enough of a book. Here's the thing, nonfiction books should be challenging. If it's not challenging, you could read a Wikipedia article about it and that would probably be a whole lot easier than reading a book and wasting your time. How many times have you been reading a book, you're like overwhelmed? You're like, this is just going over my head. I don't know what to do here. That's actually the point. You want that feeling. Now, obviously there's levels to that, but you want the book to be challenging. If you do your inspectional skim and decide, oh, this isn't really that challenging for me, you may elect to not read it. The third thing you're gonna do or could do is decide, yes, I wanna read this book. And this is where it gets really fun because you don't have to read this with a really strong analytical eye. In fact, that's called analytical reading. And there's plenty of books that have been written on analytical reading. And analytical reading is essential for any college student, university student. What you're gonna do instead is what's called a superficial read. A superficial read is where you take all the responsibilities, take, take everything off your shoulders and just read the book. Run into a word you don't know, cool. Doesn't matter, skip it. Uh, Maybe you tune out for a whole paragraph or maybe even a page because it's too complicated and you feel lost. Doesn't matter, keep going. You're just gonna read the book. The whole point of this is to gain information. You see, there's three types of overall reading. You can read to be entertained, you can read for information, or you can read to understand. Reading for entertainment makes a lot of intuitive sense to people. This is like reading fiction. This is something to just like, you're reading it, it's fun, it's fantasy, it's sci-fi, it's romance, it's those types of fiction novels. Reading for information is just to be exposed to stuff. It's like, what, why am I, like, what kind of information do I wanna know about this? Like, are you looking to become a scholar? Probably not, because if you are, that's when you actually read to understand. And to read to understand is when you then go into analytical reading and what's also known as syntopical reading. The point here is people put too much pressure on themselves. They feel like if they're reading a nonfiction book, they need to understand it cover to cover. That really shouldn't be your goal. Instead, what you wanna do is just read it. Because if you are gonna read it to understand it, you're gonna read it again. And we'll have to do a whole other video on analytical and syntopical reading because that is super challenging, but also very rewarding. But that's the thing, for most people, for most books, most of the time, you are not looking and reading to understand. You're really just reading for information, which is why all you really need to do is inspectional reading. Look at the covers. Look at the table of contents. Read the preface. Look at the appendix, the glossary. And then you're also gonna wanna read the end of the book as well as parts of the book. And then from there, if you decide to read it, just superficially read it. Don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. And I promise, you are gonna start reading nonfiction books a lot more and it's gonna be a lot easier and it's not gonna be overwhelming.